General Jones, um, you've talked about that there's a special challenge for the, for the United States in addressing the new leadership in the Middle East. Can you tell me more about that? Yeah, well, I think that um, obviously uh, the people who are rebelling against their uh, traditional leaders uh, probably feel that uh, you know, we indirectly contributed or maybe directly contributed to those leaders uh, being in power for such a long time by virtue of our financial assistance, uh, security arrangements and the like. Um, so I don't think it's irreparable, but I think we have to think pretty hard about how we engage with the next generation of leaders um, uh, as they, as these, hopefully these emerging democracies take, take shape. Um, we'll, we'll have to see how it plays out, but it's a, I think it's a challenge that we should understand uh, fully. That, uh, not recognizing that, not thinking about what we might do to uh, offset that, uh, that pretty human emotion uh, is something that, uh, that we, should, we should do proactively. Speaking of proactive, um, we seem to be in an impasse in the uh, Israel-Palestinian peace process. Um, why do you think we're at an impasse right now? Well, very frankly, I think we're at an impasse because uh, we're dealing with two leaders that don't have the, the capacity or maybe even the courage uh, to take the first step. And it's to the detriment of both countries. It's to the long-term insecurity of the region. And, uh, and frankly, it drags the United States into very, very difficult positions. Um, uh, I, I, with all my... Uh, passion. I, I, I believe that Israel should be secured and we should do whatever it takes to do that. Um, I do believe that the Palestinian state will be a reality sometime and it should have the sovereignty attributes that most sovereign t other sovereign states have. Um, so the two are not irreconcilable, but I find it very difficult that uh, the two leaders in question, even though they both understand that, I think, uh, can't find it within themselves to take the first steps towards making that a reality, and, and that's not good. Is it that they're playing too much to their domestic bases? This is Netanyahu, of course, and Abbas. Well, I mean, the, uh, in Prime Minister Netanyahu's case, he's got a coalition government that's uh, awkward to deal with, but, you know, when the security of your state is at risk, uh, you, do, you, you have to do the right thing, and, and hopefully someday he'll see that. Uh, it's interesting that, uh, that, that uh, General Dagan, the former head of the Mossad, and, and uh, Dishkin, Mr. Dishkin, the former head of Shin Bet, and General Gabi Ashkenazi uh, all stepped down within you know, a few months of each other. That's a major shift in, uh, in the power elite of, of Israel. Um, those three were uh, three f very enlightened individuals that uh, I think understood the strategic consequences of non-action towards the two-state solution. With everything that's happening in the Arab Spring, um, with the Israeli-Palestinian peace process, have we somehow lost sight of Iran? Well, it's clear that uh, Iran as a topic is uh, not on the front page, uh, which is unfortunate because it is the shadow that uh, looms over just about everything. Um, from the, its policy of exporting uh, terror, supporting terrorist organizations uh, to uh, developing a nuclear weapons program that um, is uh, potential, whose potential will uh, cause a nuclear arms race in the Persian Gulf. Um, these are things that are extremely serious uh, and, and affect most of the world. As a matter of fact, the sanctions that, that were levied on, on Iran through the UN and then the EU are indicative of the fact that um, U.S. leadership made its case, and uh, it's very important that we not take um, our attention away from, from Iraq. Sir, thank you so much for your time today. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thanks. Mm -hmm.